plasma proteins are proteins which are dispersed as colloid in plasma that is they are not actually dissolved in plasma they are fundamentally classified into three fractions based on their various physical and chemical characteristics and uh, these fractions are albumin globulin and fibrinogen also globulin further is of three types alpha globulin beta globulin and gamma globulins apart from these there are various other proteins as well though also note that almost all plasma proteins are synthesized in liver except gamma globulins so you should assume that plasma proteins except gamma globulins are synthesized in liver until stated otherwise now as you might be aware that our capillary membrane is uh, permeable to movement of water and ions however the capillary wall is impermeable to proteins so the proteins stay in the capillary and the blood and do not move to interstitial fluid unlike the ions which can freely move across the capillary wall and that is the reason that plasma proteins exert an osmotic pull of water towards the capillary and hence retain the water in the blood vessel understanding that actually ions they are present on either side of the capillary wall so proteins exert an effective osmotic pull towards the capillary so you can guess that if concentration of protein decreases the osmotic pull decreases and this will cause water to move into the interstitial fluid causing edema now apart from this very important function plasma proteins have many other functions as well so first function we have stated that is exertion of oncotic pressure which helps maintain the plasma volume and this oncotic pressure is mainly exerted by albumin see the size of the albumin is very small so with a similar concentration of other proteins what will happen that there will be more number of uh, particles of albumin and since oncotic pressure is dependent on the number of molecules and not on the size of the molecules albumin forms the most significant protein for development of the oncotic pressure the next function of plasma proteins is that they act as binding and carrier proteins so they help in transport of many substances in blood for example albumin albumin binds many substances non specifically and carries them in blood for example various hormones amino acids fatty acids then bilirubin and many other substances then there is a globulin actually it is the alpha and beta types of globulin which act as carrier proteins and these globulins in contrast to albumin they bind with specific substances albumin we said it binds with substances non specifically globulin binds with specific substances so there will be a globulin which uh, binds with uh, say thyroid hormone so that is known as thyroid binding globulin then there is steroid binding globulin fine then there are other proteins also for transport of substances like uh, ceruloplasmin for transport of copper transferrin for iron haptoglobin for transport of cell free hemoglobin then hemopyxin which binds to porphyrins so various proteins act as binding and carrier proteins then next function is in coagulation because some proteins act as clotting factors while other proteins act as inhibitors of uh, coagulation for example fibrinogen which we said that it is a major faction this fibrinogen forms fibrin and uh, obviously there are other clotting factors as well along with this the proteins which act as inhibitors of coagulation are also present for example antithrombin 3 so they are uh, clotting factors and there are inhibitors of coagulation then plasma proteins contribute to viscosity of blood especially the protein fibrinogen and uh, you remember here that uh, actually the viscosity depends on the shape of the protein we saw that oncotic pressure depends on the number of the uh, particles or number of the molecules but viscosity depends on the shape of the protein so fibrinogen is an elongated uh, fibrillar protein and that is why it contributes most to viscosity when plasma proteins are considered then next uh, the plasma proteins are important for immunity and inflammation see the gamma globulin which we said earlier they are basically antibodies secreted by b lymphocytes so we know the role of antibodies in uh, immunity 
But apart from this, uh, there is alpha-1 protease, alpha-2 macroglobulin, which are protease inhibitors. So they help in limiting the inflammation. Then proteins act as buffers and are responsible for 15% of buffering capacity of blood. Also note that at normal plasma pH of 7.4, most plasma proteins exist as anions and that is why they can easily buffer hydrogen ions and it is important because our body is more equipped to handle increase in hydrogen ion rather than decrease in hydrogen ions. For this concept that how various buffers act, I have made another video and the, the link for which I have given in the description section below, you can check that out also for the detailed uh, knowledge of action of buffers. Fine, let's move to another function. The plasma proteins, especially the alpha globulins, serve as inactive circulatory proteins, which are in turn activated by other substances. Example, angiotensinogen is an alpha globulin and you know that angiotensinogen is converted to angiotensin 1 and then angiotensin 2 and it causes so many functions in body. Fine, so these are the major functions of plasma proteins. With this, let us see some clinical applications of plasma proteins. So first is albumin globulin ratio. Normal albumin concentration in body is 3.5 to 5 gram per deciliter while that of the uh, globulin concentration is 2 to 3.5 gram per deciliter. So if we take a ratio of their concentration it comes to 1.5 to 2.5 is to 1. Now we have said before that except gamma globulin rest of the proteins are synthesized in liver. So can you guess what will happen to albumin globulin ratio in case of liver disease? Yes, synthesis of albumin will decrease and it will cause a decrease in this ratio. So decrease in albumin globulin ratio can occur in liver disease. Not only that, there are many other diseases also which can affect this albumin globulin ratio. Let's go to second application. We said plasma proteins exert an osmotic pressure and are important for maintaining plasma volume. So if plasma protein concentration decreases as happens in malnutrition, or malabsorption of amino acids or decreased synthesis of plasma proteins as in liver diseases or increased loss of plasma proteins as in nephrotic syndrome. What will happen to oncotic pressure? Well, the oncotic pressure is going to decrease and this will cause fluid accumulation in interstitial space that is edema. Fine. Then we saw in the functions that one very important function of plasma proteins is transport of substances. Now this is applicable to drugs also. So in cases, if plasma protein concentration decreases, as we have seen in various cases, so in liver disease or kidney disease, what will happen that the free concentration of drugs which bound to plasma protein will increase. See, when the drugs are administered, a percentage of the drugs bind to the plasma proteins and a percentage of them are in the free form. So it is the free form which are responsible for the action of the drugs. Now, if the plasma protein concentration decreases, what will happen? The binding of the drugs to the plasma proteins is going to decrease and suppose if the binding decreases from 99% to 98%, the free concentration of the drug will increase from 1% to 2%. So their actions and side effects will also increase. So we have to be very careful while prescribing drugs especially which uh, bind to plasma proteins a lot and we have to revisit their dose in various conditions in which plasma proteins decreases. Then as I told that plasma proteins act as important buffers also and uh, at plasma pH of 7.4 they are mainly acting as anions. So suppose there is alkalosis that is a pH is shifting towards this side that is increasing. In this case more proteins will exist as anions and this will increase the unmeasured anions and if you know the concept of anion gap what will happen that there will be increase in anion gap because of increase in unmeasured anions. So we have to interpret the values carefully. Then finally plasma proteins are used for treatment as well. For example in diseases in which clotting factor deficiency is there for example hemophilia then in that case the Concentrate of uh, plasma proteins, so in hemophilia case concentrate of factor 8 is obtained from suitable donors and they are administered. And there is something known as cryoprecipitate also which is having a mixture of different proteins and if this factor 8 is not available separately, 
then this cryo precipitate may be given. So that was all about the various types of plasma proteins, various functions of plasma proteins and if you understand the functions then also the different clinical applications of the knowledge of plasma proteins. Thanks for watching the video. If you like the video do press the like button and please do share the video with your friends whomever you think uh, that they should have this knowledge and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Open. Thank you.